Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, before I start, let me check to make sure the Zoom connection is working properly. Uh, can you guys hear me now and uh, see my share screen? Uh, you can respond in the chat with yes or no. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you for your response. I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. First of all, welcome to this open house about calculus, uh, particularly high school calculus. Um, so uh, in this open house, we are going to uh, walk through the following rooms. Uh, in the first room, I'm going to give a brief self-introduction. In, uh, in the next room, I'm going to address uh, this question here. Where is calculus in the K-12 curriculum? Next, uh, the question, what is an AP calculus exam? Then, why is calculus important? And then, what is calculus about? And finally, how is calculus taught? <clears throat> so at the end, uh, we will have a Q&A session. Um, I hope I can finish uh, my presentation uh, in about uh, 45 minutes, and we will leave some time for Q&A. As I present uh, my slides, I'm going to use uh, uh, this uh, uh, sm small cursor as my pointer. Uh, can you guys see this moving cursor here? Actually, it, it's shaped as a pen. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, a very short self-introduction. My name is uh, Shen Xu. I'm currently an associate professor of mathematics at the Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. Uh, before I joined the SMU, I worked uh, briefly in industry for GE. And before that, I did my postdoc at Princeton and, and Cornell. Uh, my research areas uh, center on scientific computing and uh, fluid dynamics. So at SMU, in more than one decade in the past, uh, I taught uh, 11 math courses and uh, I received a teaching excellent award. And recently I wrote uh, an undergraduate textbook, uh, an introduction to scientific computing with MATLAB and the Python tutorials. And this book right now is available on Amazon. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about my education background. I received my PhD from Cornell, uh, my master's uh, from uh, Tsinghua University and my bachelor from University of Science and the Technology of China. And probably um, many of you in the audience are my alumni. Or maybe um, I have alumni in your family. Uh, in, in my spare time, I teach some K-12 mass enrichment courses. So if you want to find out more information, about uh, um, my K-12 math courses, uh, you are welcome to, you are welcome to visit uh, my personal website, shoemath.org. Okay, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, I want to address this question. What is a calculus uh, in K-12 curriculum? So, 
at the right, you see this diagram here, uh, which shows uh, a sequence of uh, general mass curriculum in K-12 schools. And of course, we started with arithmetic, then pre-algebra, algebra one. And after algebra one, you can take a geometry and algebra two. And uh, after algebra two, you move on to pre-calculus, right? So uh, I draw a dashed line here. So below this dashed line, rows of courses normally are regarded as elementary mass. And above that line, so uh, we enter advanced math. So obviously, as you can see, right, the calculus uh, follows pre-calculus. Um, so to to uh, to uh, to clarify some uh, name confusion, so let me first uh, name names. And in high school, uh, the calculus sequence. Uh, is named uh, AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC. Uh, in college, uh, normally uh, the calculus sequence is named as Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and uh, Calculus 3. And um, so if we want to uh, see the correspondence uh, between high school calculus and the college calculus and uh, AP calculus AB is equivalent to calculus one as shown uh, in this diagram here. And the AP calculus BC um, is a kind of equivalent to the combination of calculus one and the calculus two. And then calculus three or in high school is called a multivariable calculus. And uh, in order to take a calculus, right, as you can see, you need uh, the prerequisite uh, pre-calculus. And after you finish uh, ca uh, AP calculus BC, uh, which uh, includes Cal1 and Cal2, then you can move on to take a multivariable calculus, uh, which is is also offered in some high schools. And if you want, you can also take differential equations in colleges, uh, in a community college or maybe nearby a university uh, in your hometown. Okay. So, um, so I already um, um, talked about uh, the calculus sequence. Um, as I already mentioned, right? So AP calculus BC actually includes AP calculus AB, which is equivalent to calculus one. So AP calculus AB uh, covers uh, the following uh, main topics. Uh, I'm not going to read out these topics. And then, as I said, right, AP calculus BC, right, uh, includes includes um, AP calculus AB, right, right here as a part one. And then it has extra material uh, in part two, right. So, so here is a list of uh, the topics in. Uh, part two, extra uh, to AP campus AB. And uh, in college, right, I, I already said, right, so, so uh, campus two, right, campus two um, is kind of like a, a extra stuff, okay, extra stuff in campus BC, uh, plus uh, a few more extra contents, okay, extra contents. So when I teach uh, AP calculus AB or A uh, or A uh, when I teach AP calculus BC, right? I cover uh, the material required by the AP exam, AP calculus BC exam, and also I cover um, 
this is actual contents. So that's actually, uh, you get a, a full coverage of campus two in college. Yeah. Now, next, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, AP calculus exams. So first of all, right, um, what does uh, this abbreviation AP uh, mean? Uh, AP is the abbreviation of advanced placement. So it's a program in the US and Canada created by the college board, okay? So you can take AP courses in high schools and um, um, those AP courses uh, normally have high grade points. So for example, uh, I live in Plano. So in Plano uh, district, uh, uh, independent district, uh, school district, uh, AP course, five grade points. And an owner course has a 4.5 grade points. And the regular course has a four points. And uh, you take AP courses, and then you can, uh, um, you can take uh, AP exams provided uh, by college board. So you get the preparation for AP exams. So what uh, is an AP uh, exam? So an AP exam is an undergraduate level exam uh, provided to high school students and administrated by the college board. So, um, so the school has uh, one to five scale, scale, right? Five is like extremely well qualified, and four is well qualified, and three qualified, and so on and so forth. So, um, so if you pass, I mean, I need to put a post uh, on pass, right? So different universities have different criteria. Uh, so, so you may get a university course credit, for example, at my university. So if you get a four or five, then you get a calculus one credit. But a different universities have different points. <coughs> Um, and the or if you sometimes some universities do not uh, give you a uh, credit, but you can be placed to take a uh, higher courses to skip uh, ca some calculus like a calculus one prerequisites. So if you want to get more information about the AP calculus A B or BC exams, right? You can visit a uh, college board uh, website. Um, and also the website gives us the coverage of uh, each exam. So here is a, uh, a screenshot of um, the website of college board. And as you can see, right? Um, you can see the exam format, you can see the exam date, right? And also exam overview. For example, uh, this year, uh, AP, Capras AP exam will be uh, given on May 8th. <clears throat> um, so quickly, I want to talk a little about right, uh, the, the components of uh, AP calculus AB and the BC exams. So each exam right, uh, lasts about a, three hours, a little more than three hours. And each exam includes two sessions. Session one, uh, multiple choice problems and 45, 45 questions and one hour, 45 minutes. So this section accounts for 50% 50, 50 of your score. And of course, you can read more uh, details here. And in the second section, uh, you get uh, six free response problems. Again, uh, this section accounts for the rest 50% of the score. And uh, the time for this section, one hour and 30 minutes. Okay, so this is a very brief uh, introduction uh, about uh, uh, AP exams. As I said, right, if you 
want to find out more information, right, you can visit uh, College Board web website. Now, so let's move on to the two important uh, rooms. Okay, I want to um, I want to uh, highlight today. So in the next room, uh, we are going to walk through um, this question here. Why is calculus important? Uh, you may rephrase this question as why uh, do I want to take a calculus? Uh, you may say um, because I'm on a fast track, right? I finished pre-calculus, uh, no other AP math courses for me, right? So then I have to take AP calculus AB and the calculus BZ to continue. Uh, that's uh, a reason, okay? That's a reason. Uh, but it's not a very good reason, right? Um, you say you may say, okay, um, by taking AP uh, calculus courses, right, I can have higher GPA. Right? That's that's a good reason. I think some students, right, and they use that as a good reason. And uh, you may say, right, um, uh, in order to take uh, some other courses, for example, AP Physics C, which is a calculus based physics, I have to have calculus prerequisite ready, right? So I have to take AP calculus AB or AP calculus BC. That's also a very good reason. And by the way, AP physics C is about mechanics or uh, electricity and then magnetism. So those are short-term reasons, but I think we need to somehow um, uh, uh, look a little in long run. And in long run, I should say calculus is extremely important because it is a fundamental to many advanced math courses. So at this right hand, at this right side here, right, you see uh, a summary of different areas of mathematics, or say different branches of mathematics. You can see this big chunk of 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 of, of, of uh, areas, and this big chunk actually is calculus and the offsprings of calculus. Okay, calculus and the offsprings of calculus, of course. And uh, you can see geometry, right? This chunk here is geometry, right? This chunk about algebra, right? And uh, this big chunk here is about Applied mathematics, and uh, this is, is a very crude way, right, to to uh, to, to 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 distinguish uh, different areas of mathematics. But actually, as you as you can imagine, right, all these branches and all these areas, they are also connected. For example, when you do applied mathematics, of course, you need algebra, you need geometry, you need uh, uh, calculus, right, and also. Um, in college, right, if you want to pursue a, a STEM major, and the calculus is a fundamental to STEM majors, okay? And more than that, and later on in your career, right, if you want to do research and development, right, in, uh, in the industry, for example, I worked for GE uh, for a few months, right, we we need a calculus, right? We need to do numerical simulations, things like that. So uh, calculus is fundamental to research and development uh, in STEM areas in your career. Um, so let me, uh, let me uh, uh, end this session here with uh, uh, this quote from uh, Feynman, uh, Feynman, Richard Feynman. Uh, once uh, Richard Feynman uh, said to um, novice uh, Herman Woke, and he said, you had better learn it. It means uh, refers to calculus. You had better learn it. It is the language God talks. And uh, we know uh, Richard Feynman uh, is a very famous uh, physicist, right? And a, a Nobel Prize physicist. Um, in if we 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 uh, we 
we, we, we look at the human history and we can say, uh, and this is, I think is, is a strong, uh, this is a strong claim here. We can say uh, calculus has revolutionized uh, our civilization. And without a calculus, we do not have our space exploration. We cannot send our um, explorers to Mars. Uh, without a calculus, we don't have radios. We don't have wireless communication. We don't have our modern weather forecast. And the list uh, can go on and on. I'm not saying that calculus is the sole distribution, uh, contribution to those te technologies. But uh, calculus has played um, a crucial, a crucial uh, uh, role right in the development of those uh, technologies. So, for example, when we do the space exploration, right, we use Newton's laws for motions, right. So you see this equation here, right. You see differentiation, and actually, and we know. Newton right, was driven by physics to uh, invent calculus. And uh, in this right diagram here, right, you see um, you see a set of equations. And some people regard those equations as the most beautiful equations uh, in mathematics. And, uh, and God said those equations, and then there was a light. And those equations are called uh, Maxwell's equations. And those equations govern uh, the behavior of electromagnetic mag magnetic waves and the study of those waves. And uh, at this uh, lower left corner, right, you see uh, these, these equations. These equa equations are called uh, Navier Stokes equations. And those equations can describe the motion of atmosphere, ocean, and uh, airflow around the aircraft. Right? And actually, my research area uh, is related to uh, this, set, uh, this set of equations. So my point here is that right, if in a wrong run, and the calculus is still um, making uh, very important contributions to the development of the science and the technology. So it is uh, a very important subject. And that, by the way, right, so in college, right, later on after calculus, you are going to take uh, many, many calculus based courses, like the ODE, uh, real analysis, complex analysis, the PDE, calculus of variations, differential geometry, and so on and so forth. And some people even claim, right, you can name those courses as the calf. Plus four, calculus of five, calculus of six. And of course, that's not a good way to name those courses. So of course, we have specialized names for those courses. And those courses are all calculus based. Next, so what is calculus? So what is calculus about? So um, I want to give a very gentle introduction about some um, essential uh, ideas uh, underlying calculus. So before I do so, I want to uh, uh, give you guys a little bit about calculus. And first of all, many people claim that Newton and Leibniz uh, invented calculus. Um, that's that's really an over simplification. But in our human history, right, many great um, thinkers great scientists, great mathematicians um, made the contributions to uh, calculus. Of course, Newton and the Leibniz made a uh, systematic uh, contribution to make the calculus a uh, rigorous subject. And actually in ancient time, right, like in Greece, like more than um, uh, 4,000 years ago, Archimedes, right, uh, and the Zeno of uh, Ali, right? They already had some kind of ideas. Um, um, they lead to uh, calculus, okay? And actually in China, uh, about, about, the, about the same 
time as uh, Archimedes. And, and okay. Right, and um, and uh, and also uh, Liu Hui, uh, this Chinese mathematician uh, Liu Hui, right? He uh, uh, calculated the uh, the value of a pi uh, using a method similar to Archimedes method. Is a called the method of exhaustion. And this method can be uh, was used by them to compute the pi and the area of a circle. Right? Actually, this left portrait here is a portrait of Archimedes and the right one for Liu Hui. Right? I think uh, I'm not going to, to explain the details because I'm going to give you a little more uh, uh, detailed uh, uh, introduction of uh, the ideas uh, of calculus later. And in modern area, right, in modern area, so before Newton and Leibniz, uh, many uh, precursors, right, made uh, contributions, right. For example, uh, Kepler, Cavalieria, Cavalieria, right, Barrow, Barrow actually was Newton's mentor, uh, Fermat, Pascal, Wallis, Rowe, um, and Gregory. So they made a uh, contributions or say to calculus, uh, some for the development of integral calculus, some for differentiation calculus, and some for the fundamental theorem of calculus. And of course, right, the groundbreaking work was done by Newton and the Leibniz independently. And the Newton uh, proposed a so-called fractional calculus and the Leibniz uh, Proposed the so called infinitesimal or say analytical uh, calculus. And nowadays uh, in calculus, we use notations uh, uh, developed by Leibniz. And later on, and um, Cauchy, Riemann, and the Realtor Stress, they made the calculus rigorous on a very uh, rigorous uh, uh, foundation. So if you look at this, uh, time history here, right? So I only showed the modern uh, mathematicians who made the contributions to calculus. Now, <clears throat> so what are essential ideas um, behind the calculus? So first of all, I think uh, you can think like a calculus, uh, one big idea is called a slicing and accumulation, or say accumulation. So basically is a, uh, divide and conquer all the way to infinity or say all the way to infinitesimal. So I, be, I believe many of you uh, have experience to slice a potato, right? And when you have a very, very irregular a potato, it's hard to find the volume of this potato, right? The amount of potato here. And what you can do here, you can slice this potato into slices. And each slice is the thin. And then you can find the volume of a slice very easily. And of course, the volume of the potato would be the sum of the volumes of all the slices, right? And now in calculus, we take this method to extreme. And uh, so, so suppose you can cut this uh, each slice uh, infinitely thin, and then you have infinitely many slices. And then actually you can get the volume of the potato uh, exact. Okay, so that's the, the kind of idea of calculus. So we, we, we slice a complicated problem into a lot of smaller, uh, simpler problems. And then we accumulate the results to get the results for a lot of complicated problem. So that's the kind of main idea uh, behind the calculus. So then, of course, we we appreciate the power of infinity and the infinitesimal. So what is infinity? And infinity is really a concept. Actually, this concept uh, was not well received in the human history at the beginning, and it took its time to uh, to 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 to, to, um, to accept this concept. So to to to. To uh, illustrate right, what uh, this concept mean means, so let's take our uni universe as an example. So our observable universe is about uh, 
uh, 13.8 billion year, uh, billion light years uh, uh, large. That's about a 10 to the 27th pow um, power meters. And we know the smallest uh, lens scale in the universe right now is called the Planck lens. So below that scale, all the physical laws uh, cannot apply anymore. So the Planck lens scale is about a 10 to negative 35 uh, meters. So then you know uh, the observable universe is about a 10 to 62 Planck lenses, right? So, so, so basically it's a 10 to 27 over 10 to negative 75. So, so 10 to 62, that's a huge number. But uh, when you compare this number with infinity, it is uh, nothing, right? So infinity can, is larger than any number you can, you can, you can think of. Okay, so that's the concept of infinity. But what is infinitesimal? Infinitesimal is like infinitely small. So it normally it's denoted as epsilon here. So you can think of a very small number, but this epsilon can be even smaller. Okay, can as small as you want. So now if you go back to this potato problem, so if you can cut this potato into thinner and thinner and thinner slices, and until at some point, each slice, the thickness of each slice, is infinitesimal. So it's as small as you can imagine, right? okay? Actually, it's beyond the imagination, okay? So it's like a, towards zero, but it's not equal to zero because if you add a zero, you get a zero. But if it's not a zero, but right, it's like infinitesimal. And then, but if you do, so of course, if that's the case, then you have infinite many slices now, right? And so then you can somehow find the volume of this plateau by accumulating infinite many infinitesimal slices. So that's the kind of, of essential ideas for calculus, okay? And when you do so, we use uh, a very useful, like a, a theoretical uh, 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 tool called the limit, right? To make things uh, rigorous, okay? And also we use the concept called a convergence. So what is the, what is the idea of the limit? And the limit actually is like a uh, underlying, later on, uh, underlying uh, uh, differentiation calculus and integral calculus. So limit, so to, 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 to understand the limit, the concept of limit, for example, when you do one over X, for example, you can think this potato, the lens of this potato is one, right? So you cut it into X pieces, right? So then the, uh, the X uh, equal pieces with equal uh, thickness. So if this X, so then one over X would be the thickness of each piece, right? So, so if this X is approaching infinity, then one over X approaches a zero. So this one over X can be actually close to zero if X is sufficiently large, right? You can get that idea, right? So that's, so then we claim the limit of one over X as X approaches infinity is equal to zero. So that's the concept of the limit which is also very important to develop uh, integration and the differentiation calculus. I'm going to explain later. And also another concept is called convergence. Right? For example, if you consider 0 0.999 with infinite many nines, right, following this decimal point, then actually this number actually converges to one. So in mathematics, we don't distinguish these two guys. Okay, so illustrate this idea, for example, if you consider this, uh, square here, right? The area of this square uh, is one because the side lens is one, right? So what you can do here, if you add one half, one fourth, one eighth, and, uh, and so on and so forth, you add this, uh, this uh, uh, infinite many numbers, is called, this uh, summation is called uh, uh, an infinite geometric uh, series. And then it, you get one. This is the concept of convergence and you can, you can illustrate this using this simple diagram here, right? Say one half, that's the half of the square. One over four, then is, you add this corner here, then you get this part here. Then one eighth, you add this part. One over 16, you add this part. You keep adding, adding, adding. Then eventually you can somehow converge to the whole square. So this summation is equal to one. So that's another very important uh, idea uh, in, in calculus. So in summary, so in calculus, we use slicing 
and accumulating, basically divide and conquer all the way to infinity and infinitesimal. And then we need to appreciate the power of infinity and infinitesimal. And finally, we have the ideas of limit and the convergence. So calculus has a, a two main parts, let's say two main components, right? differentiation calculus and the integration calculus. So I'm, later on, I'm going to show you the idea of a differentiation calculus using the, the velocity problem. Okay, so we're going to talk about the average velocity and instantaneous velocity, okay, to illustrate uh, differentiation calculus. And for integration calculus, right, we consider the displacement problem. Uh, we are going to find out how to use the velocity curve to get the displacement curve, how to find the net displacement. And these two parts of the calculus, differentiation calculus and integration calculus, are connected by the so-called the fundamental theory of calculus. Of course, as the name indicates, this theorem is extremely fundamental, right? So it's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it makes the relation of differentiation and integration. So next, I'm going to uh, explain, right, uh, the basic ideas of differentiation calculus and integration calculus using this example here. So, um, uh, in 2008, uh, uh, the Summer Olympic was held in Beijing, uh, Beijing, China. And uh, you guys see this picture here, uh, this guy here, his name is called uh, Usain Bolt. And uh, he finished, uh, he, he is uh, a Jamaican uh, sprint, okay, sprinter. And uh, he finished, he finished uh, the 100 meter a race in 9.69 seconds and won the golden medal. And uh, so at the right hand side, right, you see two curves. Uh, the first curve above uh, tells us the position of uh, the runner right, you see in both at a different moment, right? Actually, you can use a running camera to capture, right? His position at any time instant. Okay, so a camera follows him and uh, records and get this curve here. So this curve tells us the distance he ran after a particular period of time in seconds. Okay, of course, right at a nine six nine second mark, he finishes one hundred meters, and uh, the lower figure. Uh, shoes um, the runner's instantaneous velocity at a particular moment. So get this kind of curve, okay? Now, instantaneous velocity. So when we, when we hear this uh, term, um, we need to somehow try to comprehend it, right? So because when we talk about uh, the velocity, and for, maybe I think uh, from now on, because uh, we are talking about this particular example, right? This race here. So I'm not, I'm not going to distinguish uh, the velocity and the speed, okay? Normally in physics, velocity and the speed are different, but here, because the runner is always running forward. So, uh, so his velocity, the magnitude of velocity is just speed, okay? And I'm also, I'm not, I'm not going to distinguish the displacement and the distance, okay? I just use, because of, for many parents, probably it's easier to understand the distance and the speed, okay? So I use distance and the speed. Not very uh, rigorous, okay? But uh, it's okay for this example here because uh, we are in a running, we are, we are considering one direction, okay? Everything is positive. Now, so when we uh, hear this uh, term, the instantaneous velocity, um, or we'll say the instantaneous speed, so, so when you say speed, we normally say speed, you need to compute the speed using a distance and use a time duration. So what do you mean, right? What, 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 what do I mean when I say uh, the speed at a particular moment? So that's something actually Newton asked, right? And figured out, okay? So using calculus. And he, 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 he thought about this problem, right? And, uh, and uh, so this problem 
a computer to, uh, uh, to its invention of calculus. So of course we can feel the like instantaneous speed, right? So look at this picture here, right? So if you are a catcher, when a baseball hit you at that particular moment, you can you can feel that impact, right? So that impact somehow is related to the speed when the ball hits your your, your glove, right? So 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 there is an instantaneous speed, okay? So how how to define that? So now let's consider. Uh, this is a curve here, right? So this curve shows us the distance as a function of time, right? So at a, a particular moment, we can find the distance, okay? Run by this runner, okay? So of course, if I ask you, what, what's the average velocity of a boat? What's the boat's average velocity? Uh, he finished the race uh, 100 meters, right? Uh, in 9.69 seconds, right? So the starting time is zero, the ending time is nine uh, six nine, right? And the starting distance is zero, right? That's the starting point. And the ending distance is 100. So the average velocity is 100 minus zero, the difference of the two distances over 9.69 minus zero, the difference of, of two instants, right? Time duration. And you can find out is 10.32. So his average speed is 10.32 meter per second, okay? That's a boat, uh, 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 champion winning speed, okay? Now, if I want to find, uh, for example, what is his instantaneous speed at a uh, eight second mark here? Now, how to do so? so? So now what you can do here, we can consider a very small duration after eight, okay, after eight. So then you can find the distance at that moment, right, eight plus that, or I call that a duration as epsilon, okay? So eight plus epsilon, that's a later time, right? Uh, so you know the distance, right? And the, the distance at eight is also known, right? So that difference would be the distance he ran during that duration epsilon. Now to define the velocity at, at the instantaneous velocity at t equals eight, so we let this epsilon smaller, be smaller and smaller, okay? Be smaller and smaller. And eventually we take the limit we let this epsilon approach zero. Of course, as you know, epsilon approach zero, this difference of a distance approach zero. So you get a zero over zero scenario here. But this zero over zero scenario actually approaches the fixed value. That fixed value is the instantaneous speed at the time t equals eight. So then this epsilon is called infinitesimal duration, right? It's infinitely small, but it's not zero, okay? So you let this epsilon approach zero, but not equal to zero. Now you consider this quotient here, you can define the instantaneous velocity at eight. And you know, you know what, in calculus, this is called the derivative. So this is the, 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 the backbone of differentiation calculus. And based on this definition, then we build up uh, all these differentiation rules, then we can use that user differentiation to, to analyze a lot of things, okay? And next, the how about the integration calculus? So when you do the differentiation calculus, you know the distant, distant uh, uh, curve, you want to find the velocity curve. But when you do the integration calculus, we do the backward, we back, do the backward. Suppose now I, I know the instantaneous velocity as a function of time. Right, this is a red curve here. Okay, now for example, if I want to figure out uh, what's the distance run by him, by this uh, by this uh, runner uh, uh, after uh, 9.69 seconds, of course we know the answer should be 100 meters. But how do you compute that 100 meter from this curve? Right, this curve does not tell you 100 meter. So how to do so? So this time we do this way, right? We, 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 for example, we consider a particular moment here, for example, at this moment here. So you know like instantaneous velocity. Then you let this runner run a, a short amount of time, that's called epsilon. Now what's the distance run by him? Because that epsilon is a short. So you can think, so you can regard that velocity does not change, the speed does not change that much. So you can approximate the, the distance run by the runner as a, that velocity at that moment times that epsilon. Do you agree? So then what you can do here, you can just do the accumulation, right? So remember, this is like the idea I presented before. So somehow 
you just slice, right? You slice. Okay, you find a, a, a short a short amount of distance here, another short amount of distance here. Somehow you you slice this this region here into a lot of this this kind of rectangular strips, right? Just like a potato slice, and each strip is a distance run in a very short amount of duration, right? Using that uh, starting initial speed, okay, uh, for 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 that strip. Then you, what you can do if to find the total distance run by this runner because the speed is not a constant now, right? So what you can do here is just add the uh, all these small distances, okay, run by this runner. So you do the accumulation. So this is notation is called a sigma. It's called accumulation. Then you do the accumulation, and uh, eventually you take another kind of extreme. You let this epsilon approach zero. So basically you. You 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 la, 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 you you it, it turns out la, 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 the distance run by this runner would be the area of this red curve. So basically, you 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 slice this area into a lot of small strips. Now you let each the, the, the width of each strip shrink towards zero, and you have infinite many strips, and eventually you get the the total distance or say the total uh, area under this curve. And if you, so that's the net uh, displacement problem. So this part here is called integration calculus. It's called definite integral in calculus. And now if you want to get the, suppose I have this uh, velocity curve, I want to get this uh, displacement curve. How to do so? So what I can do here is here, I, I find the, uh, the, 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 the distance run after 9.69. So my ending point here is here, right? If you want to do the slicing for this. But now I can move this ending point at a different location, right? At this location, this location, you change this one. So then you get a different, at a different moment, right? After a different duration, you can get a different distance here. You can recover this, uh, this distance curve. So this is called an indefinite integral. So basically you, you use the velocity function, you can get the displacement function. So and these two parts obviously are closely related. Okay? And this idea, as I said, right, in human history, right, is not, Totally new, right? So in ancient time, Archimedes, right, considered the area of a, of a circle. How to find the area of a circle? Because the boundary is a, is a, is a curve, is not a straight. So what Archimedes did was to divide this circle, right? Just you can think of this like a pizza. You cut this pizza into these slices. And you you have you, as you can in this picture here, right? Each uh, so all the slices are equal. Okay, are equal. So then you see, I, 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 I use different colors, right? So we use a, uh, this uh, uh, green color and this uh, um, uh, cyan color, right? So now you can put the green color pieces right below and the cyan color pieces above. Somehow you get this kind of a shape here. And it turns out if you cut this more and more and more and more, right? So until at some point, so uh, you have infinitely many pieces. Then this shape here, this right shape here actually, uh, becomes a rectangle, and the height would be the radius, and the, 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 the base would be just the half of the circumference. So then you get the formula for the area of a circle, right? So it's a pi r times r, so the pi r squared. So that's the way uh, the area of a circle was derived. derived. And obviously you can see, so this derivation already had the idea of integration calculus. Okay, so it's like an accumulation, slicing and the accumulation. Okay, so uh, of course, I spent quite some time on these two questions, right? Why uh, is calculus important and what is calculus about, right? I think uh, um, uh, when we study calculus, we need to have a, a long run view, okay? We have a long run view, not just for GPAs, right? GPA is important, but uh, and, uh, in, in, in the longer future, right? I think it's a very important course for us. So I want you to have a very solid foundation. Now, how is the calculus taught by me? I'm only talking about my personal uh, take about uh, teaching calculus, okay? And uh, so if you go to my website, right, you can read my uh, teaching mission statement here, right? Understand, solve, inspire, connect, and explore. So we teach school math, at the elevated level with the breadth, depth, and rigor. We strive to deepen understanding of math concepts and ideas and sharpen problem-solving skills. 
We inspire students with background and application. We teach derivations and proofs to show why. We solve representative problems of various types and difficulty levels to demonstrate how. We connect dots to reveal big pictures and encourage students to explore. So that's my kind of teaching uh, in, uh, vision here. So, so when teaching calculus, I think uh, I, I think I emphasize these three, uh, three uh, points. Okay, first of all, making sense. Okay, when you as you learn calculus, so sometimes you see calculus books like a big bricks. Okay, thousands of pages. Okay, a lot of jargons to be defined, a lot of ideas to be understood, and a lot of theorems to be uh, to be proved. Okay, we need when you learn the material, we cannot just get a bunch of formulas and apply formulas to solve problems. We need to make sense of of calculus. Okay, we need to understand the ideas. Right? Let me quote uh, 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 a remark by William Paul Thurston, uh, a very famous American mathematician. Uh, he once said, "Mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations, or algorithms. It is about understanding." Okay, but in this calculus course, uh, we need to sacrifice some uh, rigor because to make a calculus rigorous, okay, that's something, for example, if you look at the history here, right, made by Cauchy, Riemann, after Newton, the Lebanese, and later on, you need to, in college, you, you, can, you can take a, a course called anal real analysis. So that course is about proofs, more about proofs, about rigorous calculus. But still, even though we, 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 we emphasize less proofs, but still we need to at least understand the ideas that right? make sense of uh, rules and things like that. So that's one thing, okay? That's one point I want to emphasize in my teaching. Now, of course, right, we need to know how to solve problems. Right? We need to master uh, techniques. So in calculus, you're going to have a lot of techniques. You have many differentiation techniques, many rules, and you have a lot of integration techniques. And you have techniques about a series, right? So, so you can use all these techniques to solve a problem. So for this point here, I want to uh, quote Andrew Wiles' uh, 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 remark here, right? He proved uh, Fermat's uh, last series, right? Just because we can't find a solution, it doesn't mean there isn't one, okay? So, so we need to learn all these techniques to tackle problems. And finally, right, if you read the uh, AP exams, right, you know there are many, a free response problems about the real life applications. So you learn all these techniques, then you can also apply them to solve some real life problems. Okay, and uh, so you can use a calculus to analyze the behavior of a functions. Right, you can uh, you can you can uh, uh, understand them, uh, analyze the motions, right? understand the rates, and you can compute areas, volumes, and the lenses of various geometric objects, okay? And finally, I want to uh, quote this uh, remark here. I've always been interested in using mathematics to make the world work better. So this uh, was by Erwin Ross, okay? And um, now a little bit of a uh, little bit of a, 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 a real pra practice about a teaching here. As I said, right, when I teach, for example, when I teach AP calculus BC, right? Uh, AP calculus BC includes um, includes AP calculus AD, but has some extra uh, uh, stuff. Okay, but I don't uh, just cover those extra stuff. I add more, right? Because I think in college, uh, in college, right? You can, if you just take AP calculus BC, probably you cannot pass calculus two in college. And in, in college, calculus two has more uh, material. For example about the trig trigonometric integrals, trigonometric substitutions, and general partial fractions, things like that. So uh, when I teach calculus BC, uh, part two, right? So I include uh, the, the contents required by the AP calculus BC exam, as well as the content required by, by, by college calculus. So, so when I deliver uh, this course, right? And uh, so I suggest this uh, learning flow chart. So um, I always make my lecture uh, notes available before a lecture, right? So you can get the lecture notes ready 
and preview the notes, get some idea about the, the lecture and the corresponding book sections, and even and also I assign some preview, simple preview problems, normally a concept problems, and you can try. And then during a lecture, right, you can stay focused or stay concentrated on the lecture. And uh, and now and then I, I I I post some poll questions, and you can answer those questions, and you can add some notes and ask questions in the lecture. And after the lecture, right, review the lecture and the summary notes and the book sessions and the complete and the submit the homework. And uh, and uh, then you can uh, watch the uh, recitation video about the homework. And after that, you can uh, correct your homework mistakes. So hopefully by following this uh, kind of uh, guideline, right, you can uh, learn uh, calculus on a very strong foundation. And uh, that's uh, all of my presentation. And it's a little bit longer than I thought, but, uh, uh, but it's within one hour. So finally, um, I, I'm ready to answer any of your questions. And uh, thank you for joining in today. And um, thank you for your time and the interest. And if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, you can ask in the chat. And if you don't mind, you can also turn on your microphone and just uh, uh, just uh, tell me your question. I will try my best. Okay. So the summer session. So okay. So that's a very good question. So the summer session will cover both part one and part two. So in the summer uh, in the summer session, I will teach two uh, separate courses. The first one is called Calculus AP Calculus AB. So if you visit my web page, right? So AP Calculus AB. So this course is just a Calculus One in college, right? And then the second course is called AP Calculus BC Part Two. So for this course, you need to, in order to take this course, you need to have already finished AP Calculus AB. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, to, to cover uh, the material in AP Calculus AB in this uh, BC part two course. I only cover the actual material, actual to AP Calculus AB. Uh, how about the pre-calculus? A uh, pre-calculus is a prerequisite of a, a calculus AB. And um, yes, I do offer a pre-calculus course in the summer right here, right? You can see the schedule here. Um, how is IB mass compared to AP calculus? Uh, IB mass, I'm not quite familiar with that. I think it's a different kind of a curriculum. Uh, it's a different kind of a, a mass system here. Uh, it's like an integrated mass. If that's the case, I think uh, uh, IB mass is more or less like a, a, each, 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 each course is like a, a mixture of different kind of a mass areas. So um, I think AP calculus, um, is this AP calculus is a, is is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a very uh, uh, um, um, independent course, and uh, probably if you um, if you take IB calculus to a particular level, and uh, the the content of AP calculus AB uh, is spread out in all those different courses, and it probably you can still be ready to take AP calculus uh, AB exam. But I'm not sure about that, so maybe I need to find out more about the IB mass uh, curriculum to answer that question. Sorry for that. So can you take both A, B, and the BC in summer? No, um, because as I said, right? So in the summer, I only provide AP calculus BC part two. So the part one of AP calculus BC is just the AP calculus AB, right? If you go back to my presentation, you can see this is sequence here. You can see this is sequence here. Right, right here. So AP calculus AB is like a calculus one, and AP calculus BC actually is, is, is a longer bar, right? It includes AP calculus AB 
and some extra stuff, which is called Calculus 2 in college. So in my summer, I only teach Calculus 2, which is a part two of AP Calculus BC. So part one is AB, AP Calculus AB. Okay. Um, timing is an issue, but some will take BC in full. If you take your class, you can only finish AB in the summer. That's right. Yeah, because um, in the summer, I uh, provide these two courses simultaneously. It's not in a sequential manner. So, so your son can only take AP Capers AB. But in four, we we, we can pro so so I think that if you if your son right uh, is going to take a, a ABC in 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 four, um, and the, in the fourth semester probably uh, it just covers uh, the the school uh, course will only cover uh, campus uh, AP campus AB. So then you can take a, the second part, uh, BC part two in four with me. Then, which is the, the second part of extra stuff. Then in the spring semester next year, then he, he has finished everything. And then he also takes the second part. Is that the timing good to you? If student, if a student uh, finish the AP Calculus AB in summer, is there any AP Calculus BC available in the fall? Yes, I think uh, we are going to provide AP Calculus BC part two. Uh, in, in the four, as I already answered uh, 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 just now. So that way, um, so you get, you, you get this uh, uh, continuation, right? this sequence ready, yeah. Is a multi-variable calculus much more difficult than calculus BC? Um, multi-variable calculus, uh, you need a good foundation in calculus BC, but um, uh, I, I, I don't think it is much much more difficult, right? It's just a different. Uh, so, for example, in multivariable calculus, uh, uh, um, we we cover we cover a, a function of multivariables. We do the differentiation and the integration of functions of multivariables, and we consider the so-called volume problems a lot. And uh, in, I don't know in high school if multivariable calculus includes a vector calculus that it was a, a very important series. And uh, and uh, probably some people think uh, multivariable is a little bit harder, right? And because it, it, sometimes you need to have a very good three D visualization of functions to do many uh, like a, uh, uh, application problems. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? Uh, when to register for summer class? Uh, actually, we are going to open the registration link uh, uh, tomorrow. This is coming Monday, so you can visit my uh, my website shoemass.org to to uh, to find uh, uh, more information about these courses. For example, right, we have for each. For example, you want to consider AP Calculus AB. Right, you can say, Are you ready? We have a are you ready test, right? Make make sure you have enough pre calculus foundation. And also we have a course flyer, right? Which gives uh, it gives you the details about this course, right? Including lo including logistics and uh, like, uh, the main topics right, covered in this course. Okay, you can you can check that out. And uh, the registration link will be open uh, tomorrow. So this part here will be we be, we be, 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 be ready. Is geometry class can be once a week? Uh, what a textbook to use? Uh, geometry class um, actually for the summer course. No, we 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 have two lectures each each uh, uh, each week. Otherwise, we cannot finish this whole course in one summer. So a summer course is a fast paced course. So. You need to make sure if you rest the place course, you need to make sure your your your, your child uh, has the commitment. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, let me see. So for geometry, for example, here. Um, so the so all these courses are taught based on my, my own lecture notes. I, I I have I have my customized notes uh, provided before each class. 
but we do have uh, at, uh, required a textbook. Uh, the main purpose of the textbook is to assign homework. So uh, for, for geometry, you can find the textbook's information right here, right? So uh, Ron Larson, uh, McDonough, Little Geometry, 10th edition. And also I think that this one, uh, the art of problem solving, AOPS introduction to geometry. And uh, sometimes I also assign some challenge problems from this book. So it's a good book and so it's good to have this one. And the, the second one is kind of, uh, because it's a, it's an older version is not that expensive about if you buy a uh, used one, 10 or 10, $20, right? So, so, um, so that's a, a te textbook information. Uh, do you have algebra two? Yes, um, we provide algebra one and algebra two uh, in the, in the uh, school year, not in the summer, because uh, algebra one, algebra two, uh, students are younger and they need more time. They, they may not have uh, well adapted to this high part, uh, fast paced course in summer. So as you can see, right, four 2023 courses, algebra one, algebra two. And also these two courses are very, very important. So um, you need to have very good foundation right, to move on. So that's why I split algebra one and algebra two, two semesters. So in four semester, algebra one part of one, algebra two part of one. In the next spring semester, then algebra one part of two and then algebra two part of two like that. So you get a one school year, one academic year to finish one course. Uh, what textbook are you using for algebra two? Uh, for algebra two, um, um, let me see. I think uh, you can find some information if you click uh, courses, right? You can find the uh, information about the algebra two courses here. I forget the name of the book. I think it's in the same. Yeah. If you look at my previous sample syllabus. Um, so for algebra two, is this book here. So again, I use my own notes, but I also use the wrong lessons, like a donor little algebra two. First edition, yeah. fundamental homework problems uh, are from this book. If the student is just going, is just doing okay in pre-calculus, do you suggest to revisit the pre-calculus in summer or move ahead to start AD? Um, okay, um, depending on how you define okay, right? If if uh, he has or he or she has mastered uh, the majority of the material, I think uh, uh, he or she should uh, move on to 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 take a calculus AD. But if uh, if uh, when you say okay, somehow shaky, right? And and uh, and um, uh, a lot of uh, material is not uh, really in, in hand, right? So probably then it's a good idea to to revi re revisit the pre calculus in the summer and to. To, to, to get a stronger foundation. And uh, to see if your kid is ready or not, right? Uh, you can, you can uh, check out our, our website. And um, so uh, we have this, uh, um, so if you go to homepage, right, for calculus AV, right, we have this, are you ready test? And you can ask uh, he, him or, or, or her to, uh, to, uh, to take this test and we can evaluate and see if, uh, to see the readiness, yeah. Any other questions? No other questions? Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't read this part here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can check. Um, okay. Which textbook do you use for pre calculus? Uh, again, this information is on my web page for pre calculus. Uh, if you click course flyer later on, uh, uh, sorry, no, here. I'm not going to download. I'm going to click this directly. 
So, so pre-calculus, again, I use my no own notes, right? So, so as I said, right before, so, I, so if you go to my, I can show you my canvas here. I use the canvas, right, to uh, deliver a course material. And um, so you can get the idea, right, of my notes on canvas. Uh, well, this is my university one, okay. This one. Okay. So for example, right now I'm teaching uh, algebra two. So if you an algebra one, maybe algebra one is easier for you to see. All right. So for example, right now I'm in this unit here about the polynomials and the factoring. So before the class, before the 27th lecture, so you can see uh, my lecture notes, right? I post lecture one. And this is my so I, I use my customized notes here, right? About a uh, seventeen, eighteen pages, right? I organize my notes. So, so basically, in the class, the students will focus on understanding the material and uh, and uh, uh, and doing some simple practices, right? Do the poll questions, and uh, so they are they will not be busy in, in taking notes, but of course they 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 can add uh, extra notes, right? So, but the majority of the notes. Um, is available right in in, that, in, the, in this one. Now, in terms of the textbook, um, um, this is also uh, in, the, in the course of flyer. Right? So uh, you can see here. So then we use this again. This is the same series. It's called Ron Larson Precalculus with Limits a Graphing Approach, a fourth edition. This one. And some other books are just for references, and you don't have to buy them yet. But if you have them, you can read them. Okay. Um, oh, okay, she is getting D, as I said, right? So if that's the case, uh, if that's the case, um, um, you can ask her to, uh, to complete this, are you ready test for cap AP, campus AD, and uh, send the test to us, and we can see if she's ready for AP, campus AD, right? If, if she's she, she did she she if she uh, does well enough right and probably it's not a good idea to keep her right in the same course right and it's kind of uh, boring sometimes and so so if 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 uh, she doesn't do very well right then it's too challenging for her then probably she needs to she needs she needs to uh, to 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 renew pre-calculus more yeah. Um, can you send today's meeting to us? I think we can uh, post uh, the video links uh, in our uh, WeChat, WeChat uh, groups. Uh, we have uh, this uh, WeChat group. I think you guys have already joined this group, right? So you should be able to, 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 to check uh, the videos over there, yeah. Okay, oh, more here. Should I take this class if I only took a regular calculus in school? So when you say you take a regular calculus, um, I don't know, is it like a regular calculus AB or regular calculus BC? Um, if, you, if you already took a calculus AB in school, then you can continue to take up my summer uh, AP calculus BC part two course, but if in your school you 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 took uh, uh, BC already, then probably um, you just need to uh, review the material or maybe move on to take a multi variable calculus. So it depends on depends on what uh, contents uh, has been covered in your school regular school calculus. If you want to. Uh, want me to check out for, for you, uh, you can later on, you can contact us privately and uh, email us or send us uh, in chat, uh, in, uh, in WeChat, uh, the, 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 the syllabus, and then we can decide. I want to show it to my daughter. Sure, yeah. Do you have a multiple variable calculus course in some? No, I, I don't, I don't uh, uh, offer multiple variable calculus for now, yeah. maybe in the future. Because I teach all these courses by myself, uh, I cannot handle too many courses. Will that be too much to enroll both pre-calculus and calculus AB? 
that's probably that's not a good idea. Yeah. Um, um, because precaprus is the prerequisite of capras AD, right? So uh, if if uh, precaprus is not uh, strong enough, um, you, sh you should stay in precaprus. And if your precaprus is strong enough, then you should move on to capras AD, right? And of course, maybe if, uh, maybe the kid, uh, maybe she if, well, for for forgets some material in precaprus, but uh, she can she can. Uh, uh, pick up, pick up uh, the material as uh, she move uh, as she uh, uh, takes uh, capus AB. Meanwhile, so probably that's a good, a better arrangement. Yeah. <clears throat> Is it okay that the kid watches the lecture video after the lecture because she will be out of country? We don't recommend so because. Um, uh, if uh, if your kid is uh, very self disciplined and um, and and has has a good time management and uh, this can be an option. Otherwise, we don't recommend so because uh, I think it's a good idea to uh, to 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 uh, to synchronize uh, to be synchronized with our our schedule. You can you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, contact with us for more details uh, in this situation here, and we, we can figure out a, a solution. Will you post every lecture on Canvas, or the student has to request? The students have to request. Uh, I don't post uh, every lecture on Canvas because um, one is for copyright issue. Another thing, um, if uh, a student knows the lecture notes, the lecture videos is available anyway. Probably sometimes they, uh, they uh, she, uh, he or she cannot concentrate very well in the class. So unless uh, because of a, a conflict with some other activities, she has to she or he has to miss a class, then he or she can request a video. Does the student need to complete the geometry before algebra two? Um, no. Uh, of course, it's good to have some geometry uh, background, but uh, I think I don't think uh, geometry is uh, like a prerequisite for algebra two. From precalculus, can you go directly to calculus BC without AB? No. You cannot go directly from calculus BC without AB. I think you you, you means uh, calculus BC part two. So in, in, in school, calculus BC includes AB and the extra stuff. But in my course, I only do in my calculus BC course, I only cover the extra stuff. So you need to have AB uh, ready first. So you cannot go move on from pre calculus directly to the actual material of a capitalist BC because the actual material relies on uh, capitalist AD. Is it possible to take both geometry and the pre calculus this summer? Um, I, I don't recommend so because, as I said, a summer course is already a high, uh, fast paced course, right? It is quite demanding. And uh, so instead of, do, instead of uh, taking two courses, uh, I think you, you 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 do one, and do it well, and uh, and do it uh, at a, uh, in a solid manner. Of course, if we, if we, the kid is uh, uh, is uh, very strong in mathematics and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, can manage things very well, right, and uh, work very hard, and uh, that's possible. But I but I don't recommend that, especially for for young. Keys, right? I think they need to have some some room to and the, and the, and the, and the space to breathe. Yeah. Does the student need to complete geometry before go to algebra two? That's the same question, right? And uh, um, I think that, uh, geometry is a plus, but it's uh, and it's not a a a, a requirement. Yeah. Normally, I think in, normally is uh, you you would like to go this sequence, right? It's, uh, geometry then algebra. Two. Yeah. 
Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your interest and for your time. And um, don't forget to visit our website to find out more information. And uh, if you have any further questions, uh, just uh, contact with us privately. So if no further questions, so I'm going to end today's uh, house and uh, have a nice new week. <laughs>